Good morning YouTube. Just checked this out on the bench supply and confirmed that the 14 volt amp rating seems to be correct. They, they pull about 110 milliamps. Both solenoids work the same and I think it's about time to put this back in. So I think the first step is I want to get these O-rings back in there. I wanted to check the measurements on these. It looks like they're seven millimeters outside, one and a half millimeter diameter. So that'd be four inside. There's kind of a recess down there. You gotta get that in too. I might have pushed it down too far. There, I think we got it. If you push it too far down before you flip it over, it gets down below the there's a flat spot you can see in here there's kind of a a platform and then there's a deeper hole in the middle and you have to get it onto that that raised ring there and get this last one in there definitely put these in now before you put the solenoid back in the machine because they would be really tough to work on in there. Yeah, there we got all three of them in. So it's pretty obvious, but I think I will make a little red mark there just to remind me that the red wire goes on that side. The trick is you got to get in and behind these wires here. Plastic lines that want to get in the way. Yeah, you got to kind of work your way around. The hose is hung up here. Yeah, that new hose is stiff and it's still straight, unlike the old one that's already pre-bent. Let's see, because you're trying to get the hose onto that barb right there. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so that definitely helps. Try to get the hose seated on that hose barb before you get too far, because now you have to get those slots in here. There we go. I think that's it. Yeah, two machine screws with two washers. So hopefully the magnet screwdriver is still holding. Ah, there we go. I think I got it. Just get that first screw lined up is, is the hard part. There we go. Get the get that one and then I'll snug this screw up. Okay, so there we go. So let's see, you've got this one goes into the T fitting here. That one is on the top, and then we've got this guy, and that one came down here. You have to get those in there, push the O rings down, push that all the way in, and you got to get the clip. There we go. Yeah, then the clip just pops right in. So you got to get the hose pushed down far enough, and then the clip goes on top of that brass ferrule. That's this top one here. You can see we'll try to push. There we go. Get that one in position and then use the other one to push. Ah, there we go. See, I guess we could hook up the wires. So the orange was over here and the red was over here. Okay. There's the other green and then the orange. Yeah, I've got all six wires, all three hoses clipped in. You need a little tie wrap. So what we're trying to do is get that tie wrap on there. So I'm going to try to get it started and then I'll shove it down the hose. Okay, there we got it started. Actually, you know, if I were to do this again, I might want to start this tie wrap and put it up on the hose there before I clip it in place. That would probably be a lot easier to get started. Now I've got it snugged up a little bit and this is basically your hose clamp down here. I think that's in there. So we got that cut off. I think that's it. So we got this hose hooked up. There's o-ring and clip there. There's one up here, and there's one there. Got all the wires hooked up. Now the fun part is getting this thing back in here, and this seems to be the best way to get to everything, because you don't have a lot of room on this hose. You've got to get that back up in here. And as I recall, this was 
pressed in there pretty tight. Oh, and then, yeah, the other thing is make sure you have your screws in there. Because I don't think it's possible to get the screws back up inside there. Okay, finally got the water valve plugged back in there. And then you get it lined up and then come in here on the bottom screw and just get it to catch into the screw hole. And then you come around to the top or the side here and work the screw on the, the upper side up onto the little post that it screws into. And then you come down from below and get that screw to start. And that's the hard one to get started. So you have to get both those screws and then screw a couple of turns on the bottom screw, a couple on the top, and keep going until it, it walks in there. Yeah, and then the thing you want to check is make sure this mating part of the valve is nice and flush and even and centered in that rubber grommet. If you don't have the screws in there evenly, that thing will be tipped one way or the other. And I don't think it'll make a good seal with the water tank. So you have the four clips. There's one, two. Let's see, we've got that there. There we go, all four clips in. So now you get the top piece. And so you got your switch and connector here. There we got that. Yeah, and then clip that back into the retainer there. Right post has to be behind those wires, and then the left post is kind of between the hoses there. There's three hoses that crisscross. So that's a rather tight fit. So let me get all these screws back in, and then we will test this thing out. Okay, YouTube, let's give this a try here. So we'll hit the double cup button. I like the sound of that. It's just a, a really solid clunk is that solenoid opens. Yeah, I'm still working on my pressure. I gotta get the grinder dialed back in. But then this one also when it shuts off it has just a really solid sound. So yeah, I think that new solenoid did the trick. Not a even a hint of a buzz. So that old solenoid would always make kind of a bit of a buzz right at the beginning and then most of the time it would close in solid but other times it would not and it would just keep buzzing and over the years it just got to where it was almost every time buzzing and this one really sounds solid. So if you have one of these machines and you get that real loud buzzing sound and your brewing pressure is just non-existent, I would look at doing one of those solenoids. I'll put a link to the replacement solenoid block that I got from ereplacementparts.com. If you are thinking about going that way, it took eight to nine weeks for me to receive those parts after I ordered them. So I think that time just depends on how quick Breville is filling the orders to Eve replacement parts. And then once they get them, then they ship them out to customers. So you can pick up the Olab solenoids on eBay. They seem to come out of Germany, at least most of the sellers. You're looking at maybe one or two weeks delivery on those. If you do the new solenoid block from e-replacement parts, it was $55 plus postage gets it up around $62 US. If you go with the replacement solenoids off of eBay, they're about $42 plus postage. So your, your net cost on the eBay solenoids is about $50 for just one solenoid. Or, as I'll show you in the next video, you may be able to repair the old solenoid if it's just clogged with deposits. And that wouldn't cost you anything in just a little bit of time. So stay tuned for the next video and I'll show you how you might be able to repair your old solenoid if you want to go that route. So yeah, if you have any other questions, post up in the comment section below and I'll put those other videos over here on the left side. And as always, thanks for watching.